I want to quick, apparently, and we all trust, respect Brian Windhorst around here. Yeah. Like yes. he's a pretty yes, good yeah. reporter. Uh, Wendy today on Sports Center, and I believe that this was this afternoon, said, this is a direct quote, Embiid's injury is not going to affect the way they are going to approach the trade deadline. They are already expected to be one of the most active teams leading into next Thursday's deadline. Daryl Morey's got a team that has now lost four in a row, and now here's what I would say is the most noteworthy part. He's under a fair amount of pressure to do something to upgrade this team regardless of what this MRI shows. Well, that's stupid. If that's true, that's stupid. So, I'm again, this is just what Brian Windhorst is reporting, but it does tie into something I've said on this show. I do think when you just look at like, oh, yeah, there's the cap space and they're going to hammer that. Like people connected to the team have a lot of incentive to push that. And because look, this time of year, every single person in the NBA is lying to some extent, right? Yes. Like they're, they're pushing a message that they want to be public because they're all trying to play a leverage game with one another. And the Sixers won, even if they really believe cap space is a big weapon, they have all the incentive in the world to push that right now. But those expiring contracts are just Marcus Morris is walking out that door. Robert, <laughs> Robert Covington, Covington is walking out that door. He hasn't been in the door in a month. So, that's, so your opportunity to use those to turn that into you know a, a very good player, even if it's not a great or star player, that opportunity is gone as of 3.01 p.m. next Thursday. So... Uh, just something to keep an eye on. No, look, I have been fading the idea of them actually using their cap space to sign a free agent pretty much all year. You can go back and check one of probably 30 podcasts that I've done that on. Uh, so I completely buy that. And I agree. Daryl Morey's history says he wants to turn these expiring contracts into longer term role players. Uh, I think that is certainly in play. Where I will push back on is the notion that they should be hyper aggressive regardless of the MRI. You can't say that when the MRI could be catastrophic. Like that's the only thing I'm pushing back on. If that MRI is worst case scenario, you can't then go try to be hyper aggressive now and use those draft. We're not talking about being aggressive. I'm really talking about using the draft picks to try to salvage this season. Like if it's worst case scenario, you've got to plan longer term, use those limited draft picks that you have to trade uh, in a more responsible manner. That's the only thing I'm pushing back on when I say that's nonsense. And again, to be clear, I'm not saying what Brian like what Brian is saying is nonsense. Is nonsense I'm yeah. saying that idea, that philosophy, that this MRI can't impact what they do at the deadline is wrong if Maury is actually getting pressure from above to do that. Yeah, and obviously, like, I think Wendy himself would also tell you, if the MRI were to say this is a catastrophic injury, right. like that, then, of course, Daryl Maury is not going to make a huge trade for, hey, this is a sidekick for that's Joel Embiid. That's being into DeJounte Murray, to, even though Embiid can't play. Like, no, that's try, not. Yeah, like, like no, what, like, no. Yes, they would still be incentivized to if they can get somebody at the deadline that is a long term yes. core piece that they're enamored with that fits into what they're building. One job. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Villanova product, place for the Brooklyn Nets. There is nobody that's more looking forward to this tra <laughs> trade deadline being over than Devon. If they could get somebody like that, like, yeah, you just make the trade when you can make the trade, right? But if there's someone who's more in that imperfect fit, we're ignoring question marks because we owe it to Joel. Yeah, then obviously the MRI is going to hold at least some weight. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. And by the way, it's not going to stop there if, if he's not traded. Oh, no, we're, 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 we're we get to rolling summer, that right into the summer. Yeah, Absolutely. I, know. I, I know. I know. Really, <laughs> what you need is the Sixers to spend all of their draft capital so they are then out of the running in the event that he ever does actually end up being on the move. <laughs> so you're may, maybe that's why you're pushing for DeJounte. Because then you don't have to talk about Mikhail. <laughs> maybe it's all it's making all a sense now. It's all yeah, making sense. Maybe, <laughs> but as far as as far as the trade deadline goes, you still believe he'll do something because, as you guys just talked about, simply not letting these contracts with big big numbers where you could potentially get something back and and maybe even have them for the postseason if your team is as healthy as possible going in. You don't want to just let that just pass by and not do anything. And it may not be as significant as you might have thought because things change. But with Brian Windhorse and it's putting that information out there like that, it's very, very interesting to see now what other things might pop up and certainly what 
ultimately happens next Thursday with the Sixers front office and what they may, what they do, may not do. But and then the other part is when we start seeing, like we have already with these trades, some of these other names that we've discussed and maybe attached to the Sixers, if they are moved and we see what the return is or what they were sent out for, and of course we'll have that that discussion of why why didn't they do the same thing or why wasn't that that person acquired by the Sixers and giving up that package because of the money that could have been going out from Marcus Mars, Robert Covington. Who knows if Furkan Korkmaz finally gets his wish, showcasing last night playing well. And uh, those, you know, so if those go down, of course, we'll be having those conversations uh, ahead of time of why didn't the Sixers do it if they were not the team to actually uh, get into involved in those conversations. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I hope for like, for Daryl's sake, I think there needs to be some kind of move, a consequence because Shoot. the mood around here has gone south in a real hurry. And everyone is looking for someone to blame, to point the finger at. Certainly, I I will say I've done a little bit of finger pointing myself in the last 24 well, last to 72 yeah, hours. Yeah. Like, yeah, everybody heard me last night that I was not happy with how the organization has handled this. I, I think... Even if there's not internal pressure, which I think that's the only pressure that Daryl Morey probably actually cares about if you were to get him to pass a lie detector test. I do think there's going to be quite a bit of chatter if we end up coming out of the deadline and it's like, hey, we traded for DeLon Wright or we got Andre Drummond or, you know, like that. I don't think people are going to be happy with that, especially now that Joel's situation is as up in the air as it is. But now you're right. He's going to get destroyed because it it'll be that part. Then it'll be why didn't you do more to keep him off the floor? Uh, all of that stuff to avoid the injury and to re-injure himself in, in this game potentially. So a lot will be pointed at at Daryl Morey for that, where he's been you know left off the hook a little bit through these first forty plus games because all right, you didn't want to overpay for Pascal Siakam. He wasn't the right fit. Maybe maybe even the OG Ananobi piece, and even though he's made a significant difference with that basketball team, helping out, uh, just slotted in perfectly with that Knicks team, and Daryl Morey will he's been he's been skating right now because he hasn't had to do anything, but if he doesn't do anything and, and some also because the other team names, has been humming, yeah, like they've actually been we've healthy, had the like conversation very though, good. Should you just leave it alone? Yeah. Should you just let it ride out? But. He, he's definitely going to take 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 a lot of heat uh, for this one if if he doesn't do anything and others get moved. Like if Dejounte Murray gets moved and he goes, let's say he goes to the Knicks, the thing I, is, I think it's Lakers or nothing. No, but him. I'm, it's my, my, like point my is this, read on it. But you yeah, let him go point. to a you let him go to a rival yes. now. Yeah. So you've just bettered your rival even more by the OG Ananobi piece and then following it up with the Dejounte Murray spot or Bogdanovich, whoever it might be. Uh, a name that has been linked to the Sixers, if he is, if they go there, and they I got are some bad news that came across the timeline during this show. I mean, again, Has highlighting the posturing. <laughs> uh, Mike Scotto at Hoops Height reported today <laughs> that Bogdanovich is one of the guys that Atlanta is hoping to keep around uh, long term. Oh, well, gee, they which, would never yeah, lie about that. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of incentive to say that this close to the trade deadline, but. Take it for what it's worth. You know, one of the guys that I think we've probably hit on the most over the last month or so. And You'd be all right, man, that would, if that happens? Man, that would, be okay? that, I mean, tell me what Embiid's MRI looks like and we can have a real conversation right, with that. Yeah. But that would be like if, if if all of these bagels were for sale and Kyle was, we were like bidding on them and I'm like, oh man, I really, I, there's no way I'm letting you have that everything bagel. Like, wow. You know, maybe if you give You're me a couple more dollars. You're not stopping me from then. having an everything bagel, sorry. <laughs> not, not with my energy level, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Like the mayor, 